Welcome back to the Crypto World channel, everyone. My name is Josh, and right now, another warning signal is flashing for Bitcoin while the price is struggling around critical resistance in the short term. So in just a moment, I'll be talking about my exact trading strategy alongside Ethereum, which is now also fighting critical resistance in the short term, while Solana is forming a new pattern that we need to pay attention to. So I'll be talking about all of that and more later in this video. So definitely watch to the end. First of all, we need to take a look at the Bitcoin ETF news today because just yesterday we saw yet another outflow and this is actually the third net outflow in a row. And so this now means this week so far has been the worst week in history for the Bitcoin ETFs, the spot Bitcoin ETFs in the US, because once again, we've seen three decent outflows over the last three days, net outflows. And if we're looking at the breakdown, we saw relatively small inflows once again into both BlackRock and Fidelity with only an inflow of around 49 million and 13 million respectively. Meanwhile, Grayscale had yet another massive outflow. Grayscale once again dumped nearly $400 million worth of Bitcoin on the market just yesterday. And so once again, at the moment, Grayscale is actually selling more than on average. On average, Grayscale sells around $276 million worth of Bitcoin every single weekday. But once again, just yesterday, they ended up selling nearly $400 million worth of Bitcoin, which means we had a net outflow at the end of the day of $261.5 million US dollars. But obviously, pretty much all of the sell pressure in these ETFs, all of the outflows are coming basically solely from Grayscale, which basically means when Grayscale eventually runs out of Bitcoin, obviously, there won't be as many outflows from the ETFs. And in case you're wondering how much Bitcoin Grayscale is still currently holding, right now Grayscale is still holding over 360,000 Bitcoin worth over 24 billion US dollars. And so obviously they still hold a decent amount of Bitcoin, but with that being said, at the current rate of their outflows, they will essentially completely run out of Bitcoin in just a couple of months from now. And so even with a significant holder of Bitcoin being Grayscale basically dump on the market essentially every single weekday, of course, the price of Bitcoin is still holding up relatively okay. And on top of that, thanks to the fact that Bitcoin is very limited, obviously they only have a limited amount of Bitcoin, even though it's a lot of Bitcoin, it's still a limited amount, which means eventually they will run out of Bitcoin. So eventually that selling pressure and those outflows will stop. But anyway, with that being said, taking a look at the Bitcoin charts today, looking at the weekly time frame, and over the last one day, honestly, this chart right here has not changed one bit. So if you want to know more about this chart right here, then check out my last video here on the channel. And that is important because right now, Bitcoin is essentially repeating history. And if we're looking at the standard pullbacks that we see so far in this bull market, we've seen roughly around 20% pullbacks, give or take, as pretty much the largest pullbacks in the bull market so far. And if we're measuring out from the current high to low in this pullback, we've seen around a 17 to 18% pullback, which is pretty much on par with other pullbacks in this bull market. And so once again, as I explained yesterday, when we're getting close to a 20% pullback from the high to the low, then that is basically the area of opportunity when we're talking about pullbacks during this bull market. And so that's exactly why I scaled into a long position over the last few days as I shared here on the channel, but I'll talk more about that in just a moment. First, taking a look at this daily Bitcoin chart. Of course, right here, we have the Bitcoin price in the candlesticks and we have the DXY, also known as the US dollar index in the red line on the same time frame. And what we saw yesterday, and as I said in my last video, we actually saw a short-term dip to the downside in the DXY, which was a short-term bullish signal for Bitcoin just yesterday. And so, of course, we saw the price of Bitcoin go to the upside yesterday as the DXY dipped to the downside after that relatively bullish Fed meeting. But what we are once again seeing today is another spike to the upside in the DXY, which is technically a short-term bearish signal for Bitcoin because we can see that usually when the DXY is bullish, that's usually bearish for Bitcoin and crypto. And now it's important to understand that this is not 100% accurate. There's no such thing as 100% accuracy when we're coming to trading these moves in the price of any crypto. And so, of course, there are some time periods here and there where they can move in the same direction, but usually most of the time they are moving in opposite directions. 
And so just keep that in mind at the moment. Once again, we're seeing another short-term rise in the DXY, which based on history should be bearish for Bitcoin and crypto. And if we're taking a look at this eight hour time frame, technically speaking, this bearish divergence on the eight hour chart has not yet been invalidated. But with that being said, of course, the eight hour RSI already brushed against oversold territories, as I said in my last video. And so once again, as I said over the last couple of days, this means we have limited room to the downside, at least in the short term, which is one of the reasons as to why we saw a bit of a bounce back to the upside, because we were due to see a bounce or at least a sideways consolidation due to the RSI getting close to oversold territories, like what we saw all the way back here before a further bounce back to the upside. And basically this bearish divergence right here will be invalidated if we see some sort of reversal either in the price or in the RSI in terms of the highs and the lows. So basically if the price or the RSI starts forming higher lows and higher highs again, then that is an invalidation signal of the bearish divergence. And especially if we see a breakout in the RSI above this descending line of resistance right here, if we see a breakout in the RSI above that line, then that's another invalidation signal invalidating the bearish divergence. And if we're taking a look at the four hour time frame, right now the price of Bitcoin actually saw a short term rejection from this short term area of resistance, which is sitting in between around 68 and a half thousand to 70,000. But what we are also seeing as of recording this video is the price of Bitcoin actually retest this area of support, which is sitting in between around 65,000 to 66,000, once again, acting as support. And as for other support and resistance, we have more support back down here in between 61 to 62,000 and more resistance, of course, close to the all time high in between 73 to 74,000. And we also have a possible inverse head and shoulders pattern forming here on the four hour time frame with a possible left shoulder ahead. And right now we just need to see some sort of right shoulder form and then a breakout back above around 69,000. And basically if that completes, if we complete some sort of right shoulder bounce back up and then break out above 69 to 70,000, then once again, we will likely quickly head up towards the all time high. And if we're zooming further into the short term, looking at just the one hour time frame, obviously, as I said in my last video, we had a new bullish divergence, which I said in my last video is most likely going to play out over the next one day or so. And obviously over the last one day, that's pretty much exactly what we have seen as expected, basically a bullish relief in the short term but I no longer expect this specific pattern right here to continue to play out considering it's only on the one hour time frame, and usually these one hour patterns only last for around a day or so. And so in order to continue higher in the price of Bitcoin, we ideally need another pattern to form, like for example, that inverse head and shoulders pattern or simply breaking out above resistance, obviously it would be another bullish signal to look out for. And so with all of that being said, what is my short term Bitcoin trading strategy right now? And well, taking a look at Bybit right now, I'm still in that long position that I've been sharing transparently every single day since I entered this long position all the way back here. And so right now with the trade already sitting in some decent profits, I have actually got rid of those extra buy orders to the downside and moved my stop loss into profits. And so basically in the worst case scenario, even if we crash right now, I am still making money from this trade because that will just trigger my stop loss in profits and exit me out of the trade automatically in profits once again, because my stop loss is above my entry price. And also over the last one day, considering the one hour RSI got into overbought territories while the price on the four hour time frame was running into this short term resistance that I talked about, I did actually take some profits from this trade at around 68.2K approximately, pretty much at this exact local high before we saw this slight pullback over the last one day or so. And as you can see here, I have another $10,000 sell order to basically close another $10,000 of this long position right around 68 and a half thousand. And that's mainly based on previous resistance and also a lot of liquidity just above that level, which I'll talk about in just a moment. But basically either way, whether we go down or up right now, this is currently a winning trade. So if you followed me over the last few days and took this trading opportunity that I shared here on the channel every day transparently, then congratulations, you should be making some decent money right now. 
But if you're new to this channel and you missed my last few videos sharing this trading opportunity, do not worry. There's always more trading opportunities that come basically every single week. So I'll make sure to share them here on the channel. So make sure you subscribe to this channel with notifications turned on so that you don't miss out on any of these important trading opportunities where you could potentially make a lot of money. And if you're wondering where you can actually take these trades, personally, I'm taking this trade right here over on Bybit. So I'll make sure to leave a link to Bybit in the description down below and in the pinned comment. And also, if you use that link down below this video to Bybit and make a deposit on that account, you can get up to a $30,000 deposit bonus, but only if you use that link down below this video. But for whatever reason, if you cannot access Bybit or if you cannot KYC on Bybit, then there is also Bitflex, which is another crypto exchange similar to Bybit, but you don't need KYC for Bitflex. And so I'll also make sure to leave a link to Bitflex in the description down below and in the pinned comment. And if you use that link, it'll take you to this page right here where you can enter an exclusive Apple Watch Series 9 giveaway if you want to. And so once again, if you're trading crypto anyway, or if you're preparing to take the next trading opportunity, you might as well get set up or ready to go on one of those exchanges using those links down below this video if you wanna get those extra bonuses. But anyway, taking a quick look at the Bitcoin liquidation heat map, and right now we still have a lot of liquidity sitting at around 69.1K. And if we're actually zooming in a little bit into this Bitcoin liquidation heat map, we can see another short-term area of liquidity actually starting at around 68.3K and going up towards that 69K area of liquidity. And as for downside liquidity, we do have some downside liquidity, which is sitting at around 60 and a half thousand. But with that being said, it is not as much liquidity as what we have closer towards 68 to 69K. But anyway, with that being said, taking a look at the Ethereum chart on the weekly timeframe, and right now we're actually trading just above this critical area on the chart, sitting in between 3.4K to 3.5K. And so once again, as I've said over the last few days, this is a critical area on the charts because if we see a confirmed break back below 3.4K with a weekly candle close back below that level, then we will likely see a drop back into the $2,000 range. But for as long as we are not seeing any weekly candle closes back below 3.4K, then overall, we're still looking very bullish here on the weekly time frame. And basically, we still have this breakout intact towards the all-time high. And the all-time high is sitting at around 4.8K approximately. And in case you're wondering, the next weekly candle close is happening in around three days from now. And once again, for as long as we're holding above 3.4K in three days from now, then we're looking good. But we still have this resistance to keep in mind as well, which is sitting at around 4.1K. And if we're zooming into the short term right now on the four hour time frame, as I've recorded in this video, the price of ETH is somewhat struggling around this short term area of resistance, which was previous support and resistance back here. And this is sitting in between around 34.70 going up towards around 35.40 approximately. And so if we see a confirmed breakout back above that level with ideally candle closes or even seeing a bounce from that level, flipping it into new support, then in that case, the next short-term resistance is sitting at around 36.50. And above that, we have some important resistance in between around 37.50 to 3.8K. And similar to Bitcoin on smaller timeframes, there's also the possibility of an inverse head and shoulders pattern forming here for Ethereum on the four hour timeframe with a possible left shoulder and head already formed. And so all we need to see now is a right shoulder form and confirm and then a breakout back above around 3650 in order to confirm a potential inverse head and shoulders pattern. But obviously as of right now, it is not yet formed or confirmed. And if we're taking a quick look at the price of Solana against Bitcoin, so this is Sol BTC, Solana versus Bitcoin. And this is on the four hour time frame. And right now there's a possible head and shoulders pattern, which is the opposite of an inverse head and shoulders pattern. So a head and shoulders pattern is typically a bearish pattern. But ultimately for this to confirm, we still need to see a confirmed break back below the neckline, which is sitting just below 0.0027 Bitcoin per Solana. And in case you're new to this type of chart, basically the price of Solana valued in Bitcoin tells us whether or not Solana is outperforming Bitcoin or underperforming Bitcoin. And so essentially, if this chart is going to the upside, that means Solana is doing better than Bitcoin. It's having bigger gains than Bitcoin. But if this chart is going to the downside, it means Bitcoin is doing better than Solana. 
But once again, as of right now, it has not yet confirmed, but if we do end up seeing another short-term dip to the downside and a break below this line, then we could likely see Solana actually underperform Bitcoin for some time here in the short term, potentially over the coming days. But either way, if you want to know how you can trade these moves in the price of any crypto to maximize your profits in crypto, no matter if the price is bullish, bearish, or chopping around sideways, then make sure to watch these videos popping up right here on your screen. The video in the top left shows you how you can make money from bullish or bearish price action using long positions or short positions. And the video in the bottom left shows you how you can easily profit from choppy sideways price action. But anyway, that is everything that I have to say for today. I really hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you all in the next video.